Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven and we're going to talk about creating these simple pieces of content. Now I'm going to show you different tools that you can use to create these pieces of content. Some of them range from using a site called Get Stencil, Canva, and more. I'm going to show you how to use Get Stencil in just a minute. Okay, so the first site is getstencil.com. So it's stencil, but it's getstencil.com. I like to use this site primarily because it really is created for social media engagement. So all the images, all the templates that they give you are primarily focused on social media. Now there are other sites like canva.com. So that's C-A-N-V-A.com. This site will allow you to create other social media images as well, but it, it goes beyond that. It allows you to create things like e-covers and all of that. So that's why I really like to focus on Get Stencil. Now it does cost some money, but you can start out for free. You can create, I believe, a few images, I think it's 10. So if we click on pricing, as you can see, the free version allows you to create up to seven images per month. What I recommend is go with the free version first, utilize it first. If you like it, then upgrade. All right. So what Get Stencil allows you to do is it allows you to get access to tons of images and tons of motivational quotes. So that's why I like it because you can find quotes that are built in. Now, even though maybe you're focusing on knitting, scuba diving, or whatever niche that you're in, you can utilize the quotes that in the words that we talked about in the previous video. But if you are aware of the audience and they're all women, maybe they're all men, you can use generic motivational quotes that are built in to get stencil. So to give you an idea of how to go about doing that, let me go ahead and log into my account and show you around. Okay, so I went ahead and logged into my get stencil accounts and this is what we see. So when you have the free account, you will still see all of the images but the images that you don't have access to will have a lock. All right, so that will tell you that you'll need to upgrade. But for the most part, I would say start with the free version so that you can get a hang of it. So what I recommend that you do is do a search for photos that appeal to your audience. Now, the reason why we did the audience research and looked at the affinity audiences and all of that was to gain a broader spectrum. So not only are we looking for a specific niche, but we're looking for images that appeal to that person. So if we know that our niche is filled with all women, we may want to stick with images that appeal to women. So for example, animals, beauty and fashion, and maybe love, maybe nature, maybe people, maybe textures. So you see what I'm saying here? We are really not focusing specifically on the niche, but we're really focusing on the person. All right. All right. So let's say we want to use a generic motivational quote for that audience. This is how super and fast it is and easy it is. So let's say, for example, we want to use this one here. So all you have to do is simply click it. It gets in the background and you can enter text. So you can double click this and enter any text you want based on the content and the powerful words that you have researched. Or you can simply go to their quote section and you can see that they have about 10,000 plus quotes. So we can think, okay, the audience is women. So maybe we can focus on something like confidence. 
So what we can do is, and what we like to do is, if it is women, we like to try and find uh, quotes by women. So that way we stick with the audience. So we could click on that. And what's nice is when you click on that, it'll automatically create the text. So we could move it over here like so. And do that. Now, of course, when you're ready to edit it, you can go ahead and change the text size here. You can change the line height, the drop shadow. If you want it to stand out, you can italicize it. You can underline it like that. You can change the text color. You can change the outline color, which is the outline or the border around the text. And of course, you can change the background color as well. So if we wanted to do something like that, we could do that. But in general, we like to kind of stick with a generic, something like this, like that. And when, when you're done, all you have to do is click on save. And you could save it as a template if you wanted to. So we could click on save and it'll save the image. And what's nice about Get Stencil is it will actually save it to your account. And there we go. Now, if you don't want to use something like that from scratch, you can go ahead and click on templates and you can look for featured templates. So if you go through here and you find a template that matches something that you have seen based on the research that you have done previously, you can go with that. So we can go through here. We can click this one here. And there we go. So we see an image here and then we see text. So if that's the format that you like, then stick with that. Now, what I recommend that you do with all of your images to try to keep things uniform and consistent is to stick with one template. That way, as people get to know you better and they follow you and they engage with you, that format will embed into their minds and whenever they see that format, they will think of you. All right, so psychologically, that is what happens. All right, so that's how easy it is to create content with Get Stencil. We utilize this all the time and we create tons and tons of images with powerful words and quotes and funny comments and all of that. And we actually outsource this out. So we have someone and we can say we want 365 images with quotes by women. And, or you can create an Excel spreadsheet and ask them to copy the words in and ask them to find images that fit that demographic. Or another thing you can do is if you want to find images that directly relate to that particular niche and you can't find that within Get Stencil, you can go to a royalty-free site, you can purchase the images, and then of course you go to uploads here and simply drag and drop the images right here or you can select this and then find the images and upload them and there you go. So that's how easy it is and let's talk about organizing your images in the next video. Hello and welcome to video number eight. We're going to talk about organizing your content. So in the previous video, we talked about how to go about creating those pieces of content really, really fast, as you saw. Now I'm going to show you how to organize the content into what we call collections by using Get Stencil. Okay, so what I like about Get Stencil is it allows you to organize all of your content that you've created into what we call collections. And you can think of that as sort of like a folder. So what you need to do is simply go to the saved images section. And up at the top here, you wanna click this link here, click on collections. 
And then of course, create collection. So you can create a collection, you can name it, click create collection, and that's it. So you will notice that I have about 192 images that are specific to women and about one to men. Now, in order to add an image to the collection, all you have to do is highlight the image. So for example, this image is not part of a collection. So all we have to do is simply click this here and then click collection and then add that to that collection. So in this case, we'll select this and it adds it straight away to this section. So now that you understand how to organize the content, we're going to talk about auto scheduling in the next video. But before we do that, I want to show you how to sort of manually post to social media sites inside of get stencil. So what you can do is you can go to your account here. You can go to settings and then you can connect your account to Facebook and other social media sites that are within get stencil. Once you have done that, you can simply select the image that you want to post. Let's say this one here, we can click share. And as you can see, you can post it manually to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, to all these other social media sites. But in order to do that, you have to connect to your accounts. So connect to Twitter, connect to all these other social media sites. So all you need to do is simply find the social media site that you want, find the image, click share, and it'll automatically post that to that particular social media site. And that's it. So now that you know how to do things manually and you know how to organize things, let's talk about auto scheduling in the next video. Hello and welcome to video number nine. We're going to talk about auto scheduling your content. Now, here's why you want to auto schedule your content. As you begin to create more and more content, a lot of times you can create just using this method of simplified images with motivational quotes or words, you can create content at a very, very fast rate. And you could either do it yourself or you could hire somebody and tell them, hey, I want you to go ahead and create maybe 365 days worth of content and pay them a couple hundred bucks. But then you're left with so many pieces of content that you need to auto schedule. So as you can imagine, auto scheduling is important to make your life a lot easier. But it's not just that. As you are aware of social media sites like Pinterest, like Facebook, Instagram, and more, these sites like to see you publish daily or on a consistent basis. And not just that, as you can imagine, your audience that comes to follow you, they're looking to hear from you on a day-to-day -day basis. So what ends up happening is it's a win-win situation. You're winning by saving a lot of time on your end. And on, in addition to that, you are also giving your audience content, increasing your engagement, and thereby the social media sites will see that and their algorithm will kick in and get you better rankings. So what kind of tools can you use? Well, let's talk about that right now. Okay, so over the years, we have tested many, many different social media management tools, and we've really come down to these few tools. Now, bear in mind that different social media management tools will oftentimes specialize in different social media sites. Some will have some, some will have others and some will not have others. So that just keep that in mind there. Hootsuite.com is one of the really good platforms for not only social media management, but for bulk auto posting. In fact, uh, 
you can use their what we call bulk composer to create a CSV file of all the content and all the posts that you want to create. You simply upload that to Hootsuite and it'll auto post to your social media sites. In fact, if you want to take a look at it closer, if you go to Hootsuite.com and under platform, you go to scheduling. And if you click on that, you'll be sent to this page. And as you can see, it says automatically schedule posts. And you can keep that active. So you can upload and schedule hundreds of messages at once. And this is really nice to have access to. Now, one note that I want to make before I talk about the other tools is that whenever you do auto scheduling, don't base it upon your own time zone. You really want to kind of analyze your audience and analyze the people that are following you and get a good gauge of where they might be located. Now, that might be hard because some people are located everywhere, but you want to get a generic or gener general idea of where most people are located. So if you can hit that sweet spot where most people are up and awake and then auto schedule it to release at that moment, you're most likely going to get more engagement. So that's a little bit of a strategy that we use and that has worked really well. So just keep that in mind when you do any type of auto scheduling or even manually posting is to figure out when people are highly engaged and what time zone that might be. So the next tool is going to be mavsocial.com. That's M-A-V social.com. So this is a really good tool that allows you to auto schedule your content. So if we scroll down about uh, one fourth of the page, you can see here, it says easily schedule and automate your posts. There's a huge amount of platforms out there that allow you to schedule and automate your posts, but we really came down to these few. So that's the second one. And of course, the third one that you can check out is later.com. That's L-A-T-E-R.com. Now, you will notice, like I said, some auto scheduling tools will focus and specialize in different social media platforms. And later.com, in this case, is specifically focused on Instagram. And if you know anything about Instagram, you know that for the most part, you have to do everything on your smartphone. But later.com helps you with that and it allows you to schedule Instagram posts. All right. So those are the three tools that we recommend that you go ahead and check out. You don't have to do this. And we recommend actually that you start doing things manually. And as you get the hang of posting, then switch to auto scheduling. Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on social media content marketing. So we're going to talk about a super easy, super simple content marketing strategy that you can implement to create content in the form of images that will not only attract your audience, but get them to engage with your content as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. So this is the introduction to simple social content. Now, before we jump in, I want to talk briefly about mindset because I want to make sure that you're in the right mindset before we get started. You see, there are all sorts of content marketing out there, but the goal here is to keep it simple with captivating images and a short but powerful message. And I'm gonna show you what I mean in just a second. So in other words, we're gonna keep it short and simple. The second goal is to mimic, not necessarily copy or plagiarize what's out there, but to mimic what works. So we're gonna take a look at content out there that is getting high engagement 
and how you can kind of replicate it as well. So what I want to do now is give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course. Of course, this is video number one, which is the introduction. Video number two, we're going to analyze your audience. So before we can go ahead and create content, it's crucial to analyze your audience and get an idea of their similar interests in video number three. Video number four, we're going to find out where do they hang out. And of course, video number four, we're going to talk about where do they hang out because that's important. Video number five, we'll talk about magazines. What kind of images inspire them? And magazines are a great place to find images that intrigue, that engage, and that attract your audience. And video number six, we're going to talk about powerful words that you can use in your images. Video number seven, we're going to talk about creating them. And of course, video number eight, we're going to talk about organizing your content images. And of course, last but not least, number nine, we're going to talk about auto scheduling to make sure that your life is going to be a lot easier. You don't have to sit at the computer every single day posting these images. Okay, so let's talk about what you need to do to get started. Obviously, you're going to need to know what you're going to sell. You'll definitely need to have the social media presences, such as Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and more. Now, you specifically want to target social media sites that are image friendly. So, for example, Instagram, most people simply post images. Facebook, you can post content, but images are really good. And Pinterest as well. You also need to have a brief idea of your audience. It doesn't need to be exact for now. We'll clarify that, but have a brief idea. Start painting a picture of what your audience looks like. And we talked about social sites. And of course, you'll need some money for apps to automate your scheduling. And of course, if you're low on money, you can definitely post the images and content yourself without scheduling them. With that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And in this video, we're going to talk about analyzing your audience. So like I said beforehand, before you can go ahead and create content, which is what most people do, you need to have a good picture of who your audience is, what their dislikes are, what their likes are, and all of that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be using a tool that's free called Facebook Audience Insights. And what this tool is, is it's a very powerful tool that has tons of data on your audience. And it'll allow us to gain a clearer view of your demographics, who it is, are they male or female, are they a certain age? What do they like? What do they do not like? And things like that. So we're going to keep it simple and give you some real life examples. And it's not going to be complex. All right. So let's jump right in. Okay. So right now I am at the Facebook audience insights. And to get to this page, all you need to do is simply go to facebook.com slash ads slash audience dash insights. You'll log into your Facebook account and you'll be able to access this page. Now, if you want a direct link and the link changes, you can always go to google.com and simply type in Facebook audience insights and it'll direct you to that specific page. Okay, so what this tool does, like I said, is it allows you to analyze your audience. And we want to have a more granular, very specific idea of who that might be. Now, when you start this up, you're going to see it says choose an audience to start. You can do everyone on Facebook, which is what we're going to do. Or you can have the option of people who are connected 
to your page. Now, if you do have a Facebook fan page, this is nice to have because this will give you an idea of exactly who your audience is that is connected to your page. Now, in this example, we're going to choose everyone on Facebook. And there we go. Now, by default, it will most likely list your location. If we want to target a person of a specific location, you will enter that here. Then you can enter the minimum age to the maximum age. Now, we don't want to do this just yet. What I normally do is we scroll down and we enter an interest. And based upon that, we will get a better idea of the demographics. So let's say, for example, people that are interested in a specific arts and crafts, let's say, for example, knitting. So we're going to enter knitting. So we see that here. We're going to select that. And we see this over here. So as you can see, I did not choose any of this. I simply entered the keyword and then I got this information here. So based upon Facebook, Facebook is saying that there are about five to six million people in the United States of America that are interested in knitting. Now you can change that location to something like Australia, to Canada, to a different location. But for now, we're simply just interested in the types of people. So the demographics here, we can see that the age and gender, 88% are women and 12% are men. So based upon this, we can see that knitting, it's mostly women. All right. So because it's mostly women, we are going to want to target women. So the images that we have need to attract women. Now, if it's 50, 50, you might want to choose images that are specific to that interest. So when we take a look at the age, we can see that even though it's women, the majority of them are actually in the 25 all the way down to 64 and more. So we got 19%, 20%, 19%, 19%, 17%. Now this is 7%, which tells us that the age group from 18 to 24 is a little bit interested, but not as much. In fact, we can see for males is 30% here, which I would never have known. And that's why guessing who your audience is whether they're male or female and all of that information by yourself is actually quite dangerous. So you really need to use this tool. So we can see relationship status. We can see that the majority of them are married. The majority of them have a college education level. We can see job title. We can see that the majority of them are 31% administrative services. The second one is sales. And the third one is management. So this allows us to kind of paint a picture. Now, if you want to zoom in on a specific age group and gender, you can simply click that area of the block. So let's say, for example, that we want to focus on people that are 25 to 34, or actually let's pick the one that's highest, 20%, 35 to 44. So if you click that, what Facebook will do is it'll hone in on this specific group. Now, when we click that, we can see that about 900 thousand to about a million people are in this specific group. Now, if we scroll down, we can see it's about the same married college education level, administration services management. And that's interesting because remember we saw sales being the one of the third highest. When we look at this specific group, we can see that it is non-existent. 
So what you want to do here is simply write down what you see. So we're going to talk about page likes and all of this in a different video. But for now, let's keep it simple. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three. We're going to talk about similar interests. In specific, we're going to take a look at what we call affinity audiences within the Facebook Audience Insights tool. And what this is, is they are audiences that are related to the generic or general audience. So for example, if you think about maybe basketball, somebody who's interested in sports or basketball, they may be interested in other things like running. And that would be an affinity audience. Now, the reason why we want to take a look at this is what this allows us to do is it allows us to broaden the amount of content that we can create. So let me go ahead and show you some examples of them. Okay, so I'm back at the Facebook Audience Insights free tool. And what we want to do is we want to click on page likes. Now we're going to ignore this right now and we're going to scroll down to this section here. Now this section here allows us to see the page likes, kind of where they hang out. We'll talk about that more later on, but for now it says affinity. So what Facebook will do is it will give you a number for the location. So for example, the Spruce has about 95,000 people, 1.2 million people on Facebook, and the affinity level is 159. So what that means is the Spruce is very, very closely related in terms of the people in that audience. And it also tells you what your audience is potentially interested in. So they might be interested in boutiques, scholastic parents, Joanne Fabric and Craft Stores. This is an actual local brick and mortar store that sells fabric. That makes sense because they're into knitting. And these might be actual stores. So Pink Coconut Boutique, the Modern Vintage Boutique, and more. So Blueprint is actually an online course site. So they're probably going there to learn about knitting. But we can get an idea of how closely related it really is. And based upon that, we can broaden our content. Hello and welcome to video number four. We're going to talk about where do they hang out. Now you had a brief idea by looking at the page likes, but what we want to do is we want to dig further and take a look at how people are engaging with different pages that are similar affinities. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to these pages. We're going to review the content, the images, what people are reacting to and how they are commenting. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so we're back to the Facebook Audience Insights, and what you wanna do is simply go back to the Page Likes page, and what we wanna do is look at the top categories. Now, what Facebook has done here is it gives you an idea of all the things that the audience is interested in. So for example, what media or news company do they listen to or look at? What are they interested in in terms of publishers? It says boutique stores. What do they go to in terms of shopping? What do they eat? What do they drink? What education websites do they go to to learn something about knitting maybe? Where do they go for games and toys? What websites? do they visit? So now these may not necessarily be related to knitting, 
but it will give us an idea of where they go to hang out. So we can see that these people like recipes. So we see recipes, we see that they like to save money in terms of coupons. Crockpot Girl is a website for someone who's interested in quick, simple, easy meals with a crock pot. And Scary Mommy is a blog for mothers. So this gives us an idea of the different categories that they're interested in. So what I would recommend that you go ahead and do is simply open up a few of these that stand out to you and go to those pages. Okay, so we clicked on The Spruce, which is a Facebook fan page. And we can see that it has a website, but it also has a bunch of images and videos and content that we can take a look at. So what I would recommend that you do is take a look at the images that stand out. So we can see gardening, we can see some videos. So we can see that the spruce, there's a lot of things about animals, there's a lot of things about uh, different types of recipes. So what you're looking for is patterns essentially in the form of images. So when you create your content, you could create content with images like this. And it doesn't necessarily have to be related to knitting. What we're simply trying to do is engage the audience. So if you were to have a Facebook fan page about knitting, you could simply also have images of dogs, images of gardening or recipes and other things simply to engage your audience because it's what they're interested in. So if we continue to scroll down, we can click on photos or videos. I like to click on photos. So we can see quotes, lots of quotes. And that's one of the pieces of content that we will be creating later down the road. So we're just simply scrolling through and taking a look at the images and we can see there are tons and tons and tons and tons of images with quotes. And most of these are simply blue background with words on top. Now you can improve this and make it better. So by going through the images, this allows you to get some ideas on different images with words that you can create as well. Now, what we want to do now is take a look at perhaps the images that are getting a lot of engagement. So for example, we can see this one here has about 45 likes, 388 comments. And as we're going through, what I notice is that the ones with the blue backgrounds, for the most part, actually have a lot more engagement. And that's interesting. So let's go to another page. So this one's called Parents. So this gives us an idea that the people that we're targeting, we, we saw that earlier, it was 88% women. Maybe many of them are mothers. So we wanted to go down and click on photos again. And we want to scroll down further. We can see a lot of images with quotes. That's great. And if you find an image that is getting a lot of likes and comments, you can look at them and maybe not necessarily plagiarize or copy, but find a really good image that fits this and perhaps rewrite the quote. So what we're doing here is we're not necessarily copying, but we're finding what works and simply creating the content based upon that. So what you want to do is you want to go through all of these different pages 
and do what we are doing right now, jot things down on notepad or paper and get an idea of what different images you want to use. Hello and welcome to video number five. We're going to talk about magazines and what kind of images inspire your audience. Now, the reason why we're going to be using magazines is because this form of content marketing uses a lot of images and magazines are a great resource of figuring out what actually works. Now, if you think about it, magazines, a lot of them are run by big companies. Yes, some of them are run by smaller companies, but for the most part, magazines typically invest millions into finding what works and what doesn't. So let's go ahead and give you some examples. Okay, so finding magazines are actually very easy to do. All you have to do is simply go to google.com, type in the keyword, and then space magazines. So in this case, we're gonna stick with knitting. So we got knitting magazines. And as you can see, there are all sorts of knitting magazines here. Now what we're trying to look for here are patterns, similar things. So we can see the age group of these, which is actually very interesting to me because I would think people who are interested in knitting may be older, but this actually shows me that I am wrong. So what we wanna do here is we want to go to these pages and just open these up like this. And let's just take a look at a few. Okay, so now that I've opened up these magazines in different windows, you'll notice one thing in common. They will tell you about the magazine, they'll give you some reviews, but it won't really allow you to look inside of the magazine. Now the reason why I opened these up is because what we do is we dig deeper. So knit simple magazine, what I do is right click, click on search Google for this. So we'll search Google for this. We'll scroll down until we find the website. So if we scroll down, we can see it is knits or knit simple mag.com. We're going to go to this page and here we are. So when we're at the actual website, they are going to show you even more images inside of the magazine. So that's kind of a hack and different way to dig a little bit deeper. So we can see that is very colorful in terms of images. They use a lot of blues. I've noticed that with the Spruce website and then of course this one here. And what we're looking for is a pattern. So they use a lot of pinks, a lot of blues, a lot of yellows. And we can dig deeper like so. So what you want to do is simply look through this and get a better idea of the different images, the different colors that stand out. All right, so I'm gonna close this down. I'm going to go to the next one. This one is Interweave Knits Magazine. I'm gonna do, do the same exact thing. We're gonna right click, do a search on Google, and see if they have a website. And this one looks similar. So we're going to go over here. So it looks like they are covering a wide variety of different topics, but this one here gives us, gives us an idea of the coloring, the patterns, even the demographics. So we see this lady here, she looks like she 
can't really tell if she's at the beach or something. But you want to look at the backgrounds and get an idea of, okay, this looks like a garden. Let's use a garden graphic and all that. So location is key. Demographic is key. And colors are key. So what you want to do here is just simply go through magazines. Like I said, jot down colors, jot down patterns that stand out. And once we have that information, we can move on to the next step. Hello and welcome to video number six. Let's talk about powerful words because the combination between images and powerful words equals great content. It's simplified content, but it's enough to get your audience engaged. So images with motivational quotes are important. In fact, if you watch the videos beforehand where we you know, looked at images that were part of related pages, you would have noticed that a lot of the images that were getting engagement had a lot of motivational quotes. So this is the simplified content that you can create really, really fast that will get engagement. So we're going to show you how to find quotes that are appealing to your audience. We're going to show you how to find images and more. Okay, so we're going to keep with the topic of knitting simply because we utilize that as an example in the previous videos. But what you need to do is simply go to google.com and do a search for these terms. So when you type in funny and then you put in the keyword or the niche, then it'll drop down and it'll tell you Things like funny knitting memes, quotes, pictures, video sayings, GIFs, patterns, t-shirts, and more. Now, you have to get in the frame of mind of, okay, the people that are visiting your fan page, your Instagram, are they looking for funny? Are they looking for serious? What are they looking for? Now, what we like to do is we like to create a combination of in a variety of different things. We like funny, we like serious, we like different emotions. But if your audience is really serious, you might want to stick with just motivational quotes and things like that. But simply go to Google and you can do funny knitting memes. And memes are simply images with some funny text on it, as you can see here. And a lot of times you'll, you'll see things like 324, 146, best knitting memes. So that will give you some ideas on different content pieces that you can create. Now, obviously, as I said earlier, do not plagiarize, do not copy it as it is exact, but you can always rewrite it in your own words. You can always use similar images and things like that. Another keyword term that we would recommend that you use is motivational quotes or even quotes space, the keyword of your niche. So as you can see, motivational quotes, knitting, we can see other variety of search terms here. But if you scroll down, you'll see other things like this. 167 best knitting quote images. 25 best motivational knitting quotes and all this. So what you're trying to do is simply for now, get an idea of the images and again, look for patterns. So are you seeing a similar color being used or a similar word being used? Things like that will stand out and will enable you to create content pieces in the form of images that are really engaging. All right. So for example, Let's go ahead and we'll just open this one up here. And Pinterest is actually a great place to go to to find a variety of uh, quotes, words, and things like that. A lot of times you'll find people who create specific boards 
and they'll pin them and they'll have a huge, huge list of quotes and words that you can use. So as you go through here, like I said, don't copy it, but get an idea. And what I recommend is, again, just like what we did with Facebook pages, look for images that are getting high engagement, meaning high pins and all that. And look for content pieces that have less words. Actually, the less words, the better. So that's one way of going about doing this. And that's it. So that's as simple as it gets. All right. So now let's move on to the next video.